Well, tonight we have a story about one of our own local four anchors, but it's a story millions can relate to. It's a story about skin cancer. Yeah, you may have seen on ClickOnDetroit.com Karen Drew sharing her diagnosis and surgery in recent days after she was diagnosed with skin cancer. That's why she's been off the anchor desk here. Well, tonight she joins us with a lesson we can all learn from. Let's join Karen now. She's live. Karen, first off, how are you doing? Thanks, Kim and Devon. I'm doing okay, and that's really what it's all about. Uh, it's been five days since the surgery on my cheek. The great news is the cancer is gone, but I do want to share with you how I detected the cancer, and it was this little red mark that was on my cheek may not seem like much to you, but my dad died from melanoma. So I've been going in for those yearly checks and carefully examining every little mark and mole on my skin, always worried it might happen to me. So here's my story and a little bit of a warning. There's one part of the surgery that might be a little bothersome to some. So this was the mark on my skin that had me worried, dry, flaky, and it started to bleed sometimes when I washed my face. So I went to my dermatologist, Dr. Stephen Grecken, to get it checked out. I saw a pearly papule and I saw blood vessels. Yeah. And I'm 90% sure that it's a little basal cell. So I'm going to take a small biopsy. The biopsy came back. It was basal cell carcinoma, the most common form of skin cancer. 3.6 million cases are diagnosed each year. So what I was dealing with was not unique. Right in here. But I'm sharing my story as a reminder to get your skin checked. Not all basal cell carcinomas have the same appearance. Here are a few ways they can appear. An open sore, a shiny bump, a reddish patch or irritated area, or maybe a scar-like area that is flat white or yellow or waxy in color. You're definitely not alone, okay. but it's the most common and the easiest to treat. And I'm doing Mohs surgery, so like they dig and dig and dig and keep digging to make sure they get all the cancer cells out. Dr. Michael Whitworth was my surgeon for Mohs surgery. The number one thing is I'll make sure it's completely removed right. and try to keep it as small as possible. Okay. A fairly fast in-office procedure where they numb your skin, mark the spot, then remove thin layers one at a time. So you're welding my skin. Yeah. The doctor then examines the layer under the microscope to make sure all the cancer is gone. It took two skin layer removals to remove all the cancer. It'll look better when the stitches are out. Bandaged up, the doc tells me to come back in six days to get those stitches out. Time to head back to work with a lesson and a story to share. Use sunblock, reapply, limit sun exposure, and get your skin checked. All right, so this is what my cheek looks like now. The stitches are in. I've been putting a bunch of Vaseline on it two to four times a day. Now the stitches are kind of come out tomorrow morning. Then I'm going to start that scar gel. Hopefully it heals fast, I hope. Dr. McGeorge is here to talk. You know I come to you all the time with all my health stuff. <laughs> I do know a lot about your health. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll take pictures and I send it. I, you know, I sent it to my dermatologist, Dr. Grecken, a while ago, and he's like, yeah, that looks questionable. Yeah, well, and you know, I think ultimately this is a good teaching lesson for everybody. You know, we need to make sure that we avoid the sun as much as possible, and that's going to mean things like wearing sunblock. Mm -hmm. That's going to be things like wearing UV protective clothing. I actually happen to be a UV protective clothing person. I know you do, and you go fishing all the time. Exactly, I fish all the time, and you can, yeah, you can see the goof. I look like a dork, maybe, but I am covered up. I protect myself by wearing hats and wearing shielding around my head and neck. But you know, if you can't wear um, sunblock all the time, UV protective clothing is an option. Certainly the other way around that is if you cannot wear UV protective clothing, you need to wear sunblock and you need to reapply it consistently. That's the mistake I made because I was, I mean, I knew my dad's history, so I always did sunblock and I really did it a lot of my face. If people saw me, I always had my hat, my glasses on, yeah. but I didn't reapply. Right, I would put it right. on in the morning and I thought it was good and I need to do that better. You need to, right, be careful about that. You know, and you, and you mentioned glasses, and I think that's really important because it doesn't only protect the skin of your eye, it actually yeah. protects your eyes. So sunglasses are actually very important. I should also point out, obviously, if you have any opportunity just to take advantage of the shade around you, you should take advantage of the shade. But, you know, these are all teachable moments. And, and I then think know important. your skin, your genetics, because I know my yeah. dad has melanoma, so you were talking about knowing, like, your skin type mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah, you know, so genetics actually play a really important thing and you need to know your skin type and by that I mean fair-skinned people with lighter hair who burn easily, that is definitely 
a high risk. Yeah. And everybody, and to be clear, everybody is at risk for skin cancer. But knowing your genetics, knowing your family history, so for example, you do have a family history that increases your risk of having skin cancers even at a younger age. And then of course, the age at onset. And I, you know, your father had skin cancer at a somewhat younger yeah, age. Yeah, he got it at 62 and died. Right. And you're saying I have basal, and basal should be probably later in life. Right. So clearly I'm on the track to... Exactly. Generally so. speaking, basal cell carcinoma is an older person's skin cancer. So that's important for your children to yeah. remember, actually. I know, because they're blonde hair, blue eye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I'm going on air tomorrow with the stitches off, guys. So hopefully we'll see how good the You look great goes. already. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Back to you.